here we are in 2021. But would you like to have a look at 1975? It was a very good year. And here in 1975, we're in July, the weather is warm and sunny, very hot outside. We've got horse brasses on the walls and the ever-present Tina, the geometric wallpaper, everyone had a constable print. We're drinking our tea from Hornsey Pottery. We've got the obligatory Shire horse. The Olvingham Pottery and the Huntsman Glasses. The Reader's Digest and the Schreiber Unit. Everything as it should be. The Sailboat Oil Lamp, the Lava Lamp, which still works. Even after all these years. And now, I'll talk to you a little bit about it. If you were at school in 1975, as I was, then a significant proportion of your teachers were ex-military. National service didn't end in England until 1960, and the last National Service personnel were discharged in 63, only a dozen years or so before that. Corporal punishment was still very much a part of discipline, be it the slipper or the cane, and lots of teachers did not hesitate to use it. Political correctness, currently being called uh, being woke, wasn't really a thing. This was reflected in many aspects of life, but particularly in TV entertainment, especially comedy. There was still the sense that we should all try to be nicer to each other, and maybe even pay women the same amount of money as men for doing the same job. There was, however, particularly among the less well-educated, a level of intolerance towards illegitimacy, homosexuality, or people of another race. Transsexuals were so rare as to be generally unheard of, and there wasn't the sophisticated medication or surgery as would be available in the future. Nearly everyone smoked, in pubs, restaurants, cinemas, on trains, aeroplanes, and in cars. Cigarettes were as cheap as 20 pence a packet. They didn't carry pictorial health warnings until decades into the future. And almost everywhere stank of stale smoke and cigarettes. Cars, whilst less reliable than they would become, were at least easier to mend. And most drivers had a better knowledge of how to fix the simpler issues from fan belts to leaking radiators. You replaced your battery almost as often as your tyres. There were no onboard computers and not many cars even had power steering. The driving test was much simpler in 1975 and there were still plenty of people around who'd never even taken that one. Who'd learned in the armed forces and were issued with a licence on the strength of that. Processed food was the in thing. Hardly anyone was vegetarian and few had even heard of vegans. Food, especially confectionery, was full of preservatives colourings and what would later become known as e-numbers, none of which did you any good at all. Entertainment was limited to a television with three channels, BBC One, BBC Two and ITV which showed different programmes according to where in the country you lived and your television still took two or three minutes to warm up. Most people were still watching in black and white, there were quite a lot more cinemas although many had already become bingo halls. Not everyone had a telephone. Nobody actually owned one. They were rented from the only telephone company available, which at the time was the post office. Unless you lived in Hull, where the public telephone boxes were painted cream instead of red, and it was all owned by a company called Kingston Communications. Our telephones were fixed landlines with a big dial on the front. There wouldn't even be push buttons for another 18 months or so. Secretaries used typewriters, not keyboards. Most men couldn't type. If you needed to contact someone when you were out, you used a coin-operated phone box. There was no Google. If you wanted to know stuff, you asked someone, and they wouldn't always tell you. Oh, that's a trade secret, they would say. Or you went to the library and got your information from an actual book. There were lots of both of those things around in 1975. 
You had a bath once or twice a week. Your body odour was masked either by tobacco or the great smell of whatever aftershave happened to be in fashion at the time. There was the radio, of course, and really only one music chart. Most people below 30 could tell you what was number one, and most of the younger ones could sing all the words to it. We bought vinyl records or cassettes. Most cars didn't have radios, air conditioning or central locking. Lots of them didn't even have seat belts. And even wearing them didn't become mandatory for another eight years. And even then, only a few were in the front. Wearing a crash helmet if you were riding a motorbike had only been compulsory for about two years. And they'd only started to measure the amount of alcohol in your body if you were driving in 1967. There were no speed cameras. That was 1975. The following year would have a really hot summer remembered and talked about for decades to come. Glam rock was on its way out, punk was on its way in. We still had Elvis Presley, we still had Green Shield stamps, and the Queen was still in her 40s. And here we must leave 1975 and return to 2021. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Perhaps we'll do another year, another time. Bye-bye.